Hello everybody, I'm Gatoru and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a redstone only, password only kind of key code door with redstone and command blocks in Minecraft 1.14.4. Now this will work with 1.13 and above, it's because it's using the new command block structure, but this is also possible in lower versions for the redstone part of this. So as you can see right here, we have our little iron door that has no seemingly way to open it. No levers, no buttons, this doesn't do anything. Secret base key required. The key would go into this hopper and if you're making this for an adventure map then you'd probably hide this somewhere more inconspicuous but like right here. You can see I hid this chest and it's got a key inside. Take the key, throw it in here and boom opens the door. Secrets. I found them. <laughs> so how this works is if you go over here I have unearthed what's below. It's the same thing as over there. You got the chest hidden. You got the locked door and you got the hoppers. This right here, this hopper leads into this hopper. This comparator is reading the contents of this hopper right here. Inside of this hopper, we have 22 of an item. So if you take 22 items of one kind and put them in here, just drag them all in there evenly. Make sure at least one's in every single space. It doesn't really matter if you put six in the last slot or in the first slot or if you put five of them in this one and five in this one. It doesn't really matter as long as there's at least one in every single space. Now, as you can see, they're all named key. And that's because I cloned it with a MetaMask click and I was able to put 22 inside of this hopper. The reason for that exact number of 22 is because this comparator is reading the amount inside of this hopper. Once there's 23 inside of this hopper, it'll output another redstone um, current. So right now it's outputting one. It is one item away from outputting two. Once this two gets um, output, let me show you. If I take one extra key out of here and put it in, it outputs two, which then enables this um, repeater to reach the signal. It powers this torch up, which turns off, and then enables this torch to turn on, which is below the door, which powers this block, of course, and opens the door. It's a simple not gate setup. So if I were to take one out, boom, door off, Put one back in, door on or open. So as you can see, it only takes 22 items of a kind. Now it doesn't have to be tripwire hooks, it doesn't have to be anything special like that. It could be literally anything named. Naming it is probably the best way to keep it from um, accepting something that you don't want. So let's say if I were to take dirt block, okay? Take 22 of those. 22 dirt, if I were to replace all of these below, with dirt instead. Now, if I wanted to make an adventure map per se, and I wanted dirt to be the thing you needed to throw in here, but I wanted to be a specific dirt block, not just any dirt block that you find lying around. Well, because they're not named and they're not special in any way, I can just throw any old dirt block in there and it'll activate because it will stack with these down here. Now, if it were named dirt blocks, then it would not stack because this regular dirt block would not be able to stack with these because these would have a different name and if they had the same name it would be able to stack hope that makes sense so if you have 22 items of one kind put them in here put one more door opens up simple as that now if you want to make this without hoppers and without redstone and you just want to hold the item in your hand it gets a lot more complicated but it's way cooler of an effect so right here, it's kind of um, daunting looking, but it's actually really simple because I put signs everywhere to help you understand it. So this right here, regular door, nothing special about it at all. It's just bricks around a door, right click it, all I want. Easy to open, doesn't need a key for anything. But if I were to put these Fred and Bob's in front, they're just armor stands named that. Right click, each one summons one, this one kills them. Show you this angle so you can see it. Fred, oh, that's the command, Bob. By the way, the commands will be in the description in case you want to copy them and put them into command blocks in your own world. The only thing is um, the coordinates will have to be changed for your specific location in your world. But we'll get to that in a second. So Fred and Bob here are two armor stands that are in front of this door. They're kind of half in front of it. And what they're doing is preventing you from right clicking it. See, I'm, you probably can hear that. I'm right clicking the door. There is no space on this door whatsoever that you can right click and open it. And with this button right here, turns Fred and Bob invisible and hides their names. Now typically you wouldn't have a named armor stand, but that's fine. I did that for the sake of comedy. So you can see right here, it's a normal looking door, but you can't right click it. 
Well, right here, we've got some free secret keys. Just so happens to be in this chest. It's the same as before. I just put them all in one chest. So over here, we have these command blocks that are checking to see if I have the key in my hand when I walk into the door. So this command block right here, it tests for players within a one block radius of the door. So it's set to test a one block radius around this block in front of the door for your key in hand, of course. And it also places a redstone torch below the door when it tests positive. So if I were to have this key in my hand and walk in front of the door, it would place a redstone torch below it, thus opening the door. But if I were to walk in front of it with it in my inventory, nothing happens. It only tests if it's in your hand. So watch, this is what it does. Hold in my hand, opens up. It's really that simple. Now, the rest of this command block right here, this removes the key from your hand so it doesn't constantly try to place a rest on torch below the door and lag your game. Um, I'll show you these commands in a second, but I'm gonna redo that. This one removes the torch, thus closing the door. And this makes them visible again. I'm going to delete them. So now, regular door, back from scratch. If I go inside this chest, grab another key, place Fred and Bob in the wrong order, but it's fine. Turn them invisible, cannot open it. It's in my hand. If I put it in my off hand, still nothing happens. If I were to put it in a random hotbar slot, it will still work, but it's not a specific slot that matters, it's when you're holding it. So walk up to the door, you cannot right click it to open. Even though it's a wooden door and you should be able to do that. But if I put it in my hand, opens up. And then if you want to close it, you can close it, but you can't open it back up. It's um, a little bit of a flaw, but what you can do is, at the end of this command line, after it takes away the key, you can make it where it destroys the two armor stands so that it's a normal working door again. So now I'm going to show you these commands really quickly, um, starting with the summon commands. Um, they're slightly specific. Well, actually, they're pretty specific. So it's summoning a Minecraft armor stand at a specific value, which we'll get into in a second. Invisible, zero, that's not necessary. He'll be visible automatically. For the custom name, what you want to notice here is that after the colon, there is a quotation mark, a slash, and a quotation mark. And then the name, and then a slash, and a quotation mark, and another quotation mark. Now the reason it's so odd like that is because what it really is, if I delete these, is two sets of quotation marks, or one set of quotation marks on one side. So one, two, and on the inside of the quotation marks, put a slash, quotation inside of this one so close to the name on the inside of the other quotation mark slash quotation mark now you basically now have a slash and quotation mark and then a slash and quotation mark inside of the outer ones it's kind of confusing there's probably better tutorials on the internet explaining that but after that you have custom name visible one which enables you to see the name above their head and no gravity one that's very important for this uh, this allows it to float in the air disabling gravity now, the same thing for this one over here, except the coordinates are slightly different and the name's different, of course. So for the coordinates, basically what I've done is the center is 0.5 of this block. So what I'm doing is I'm summoning a Minecraft armor stand slightly to the right and slightly to the left, to the left of the center. So to do that, I have to use decimals. And right here, you can see I'm using this block right here, negative 824.50. And then the Y value is 0.1, just so that it elevates it just a little bit. Now, if you do not disable the gravity on these armor stands, they'll fall back down. And you'll be able to open the doors on the very corners up here. Um, well, I don't have them in here right now. But you would be able to open the doors from the very, very slightest corner. And if you don't want anyone to access it that way before getting a key, then you want to enable no gravity on the armor stands and summon them 0.1 decimal higher than the floor so like right here the floor is uh, 56 looking at block 56 there 56 right there so it's summoning the feet right here 0.1 so slightly above the very center of the block right here as you can see is negative 824.5 now if i go over slightly to the left it'd be 0.25 slightly to the right 0.75 but if they're farther apart there'll be a gap in between them and you can open the door in the gap. So they have to be specifically, one has to be 0.75 from the block, and the other one has to be 0.25. It's kind of simple if you look at it like that. And they both have to be, they both have to have a 0.1 decimal after the Y. The point of that uh, I'll explain is so that you can't access this little bitty sliver to open the door. This command block right here, simple. It just kills all the armor stands at this area with a radius of three. 
That way, if you have other armor stands on your map, they do not get deleted by this command block. But this is just for test purposes. You probably won't, and you probably won't actually delete them, unless, of course, you want the door to function after you use the key. Hey, sorry if the camera angle is a little different. It's future me here. I forgot to mention something really quick. Um, I never showed you the commands inside of these two command blocks. So inside of this command block, the one that tests for the um, key when you're standing in front of the store right here, it looks like this: slash execute. If this entity, which is this entity at E for entity, and then the specifier inside the brackets, type is a player. So it's looking for a player at this coordinates in radius of one or closer. That's what the dot dot means. And also for an NBT tag of, so NBT equals, and then what is it called? Square bracket? No, square bracket, squiggly brackets. Selected item, colon, squiggly bracket again. ID of the item, tripwire hook. And the tag of the tripwire hook, so it doesn't trigger with any old tripwire hook, uh, the display name key. And if all that's met, run set block below the door. That's what just happened to be the block below the door. Uh, Minecraft redstone torch, and it replaces the block. So right down here below this, it replaces the redstone torch. Let me go down right there. So that's pretty much all that command does. Now this command block right here um, removes the key from the active slot hand. The active slot hand is the um, one that is highlighted right now. So as you can see, right now I'm holding sandstone. That's the second slot, third slot, and then right here is the first slot. So whatever the key's in, if you're holding it, that is considered the active item slot. Whatever one you're holding, like number two right now, is the active item slot. The one with the bolder border. So this command replaces the item of an entity at E type equals player. In this radius, it replaces the weapon in the main hand, which is what I just talked about with air. Air is an invisible block. It's basically what you already have in your inventory, air, and count of one. So if we do this all over again one more time, reset. Um, I don't think they're there, are they? Fred and Bob, open the door. So that's how those two command blocks work. And for the key to work, what I've done is I did give Gatoru Minecraft's tripwire hook, and then the MBT data is right here after the name. If you put a space, it won't work. In 1.14, it has to be connected to the actual item itself. So display name, and then of course, like I just explained a while ago, the slash quotation mark, slash quotation mark. Inside of the other quotation marks, it's really confusing, but it's how it works. Key, I named a key just because, and then I put um, count for one. So it'll give me one key named key. The commands will be in the description below in case you're confused. You can just kind of copy and paste them into your Minecraft world inside of command blocks. But yeah, hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if I've earned your subscription. Have an awesome blessed day, guys, and I will see you gators later. Goodbye.